Okay, this is exam two for uh, fall 22. First thing I have a, um, a ball that I'm kicking from ground level. I give you the mass, but of course you don't need the mass. And I start in at ground level, it's going up and it's coming back to the same point where it started. I'm gonna go ahead and determine what is V naught X. That's going to be V naught cosine of theta R 25 cosine of 30. And that's equal to um, 21.7. And then V naught Y is 25 sine of 30. And then that's equal to 12.5. So I'm just going to sort of keep these up here. I'll need them at various points. Uh, the first thing I want to know is what is the speed of the ball at the top of the trajectory? Well, as the object goes up like this, I know at the top of the trajectory that Vy is equal to zero. So the only speed that I have is Vx. But I know that Vx is equal to V0x. So that's equal to uh, 21.7. And then for part B, I want to know what is the maximum horizontal range? Well, first I need to find out how long is this object in the air. So I'm going to first determine what is the time at the top of the trajectory. I know that Vy at the top is equal to zero, and I also know that that's equal to V naught Y plus AYT. So I get zero equals V naught Y is 12.5, that's from up here, minus 10 times T. So I get T equals to 1.25 seconds. Now that is T top, but really I need to know the total time, and so the T total is going to be twice that value or 2.5 seconds. Now I can find the horizontal range. The horizontal range is equal to Vx times T total uh, because over here is where I'm equal to 2.5 seconds and that's also where I want to know X. So that's going to be equal to 21.7 meters per second. That was my initial X velocity times 2.50 seconds and that's equal to 54.3 meters. And then finally, I want to know what is Vx at a particular, or I want to know what is V uh, at t equal 2 seconds. This is part c. Uh, I want to know what that is equal to. Well, I know what the x component of that is. It's going to be equal to 21.7. So if my object it goes up and down uh, at 2.0 seconds, that's going to be somewhere right about here. And I know that the x component is equal to 21.7, but I also need to know what is the y component of that vector. So I say vy is equal to v naught y plus ayt. That's equal to 12.5 minus 10 times my time, which is 2. And so it's minus 7.5. So uh, this component of the vector is 7.5 meters per second. But I want to know the resultant vector, which is right there. That, that would be the speed. And so to find that speed at t equal 2 seconds, I say the square root of 21.7 squared plus 7.5 squared. And that's equal to 23 meters per second. All right. So that's part C. There's part B, and then part A is 21.7. Here I have a block on an inclined plane. It's being pulled up by a rope with a force of 230 newtons. What is the normal force acting on the block? So first, let's, uh, let's draw our coordinate system like that and that. Now we'll draw all of our vectors on it. I have a force weight. Notice this force weight is at 60 degrees. And then I also have a, uh, oops, sorry about that, we're going to hold off on that vector. Uh, I have a normal force, Fn, and then I have this force that's acting up, and it's equal to this 230 newtons. Fw, by the way, it's a 10 kilogram block, so that's mg, 10 times 10 meters per second squared is uh, 100 newtons. So the weight of this object is 100 newtons. Uh, now let's draw this, and I'm going to resolve all these vectors. What did I use? There we go. I'm going to resolve these vectors into their x and y components. So I'll have fn. This is going to be uh, f, 
which I'll just go ahead and put 230 newtons. And then I'm going to have the X and Y components of FW. This will be 100, cos 100 sine of 60. That is FW sine of theta equals, equals 100 sine of 60, uh, which is equal to 87 newtons. And then also this will be FW cosine of 60 which is equal to 50 newtons. Now the first part, part A, is just asking what is the normal force? Well, I can look at the sum of the forces in the y direction. That's going to equal to zero. So I have Fn minus 87 equals to zero. So Fn is equal to 87 newtons. So that's the answer for part A. And then for part B, assuming no friction acts on the block, which is how I've drawn this force diagram here, I want to know what is the acceleration of the block. Well, the acceleration is in the x direction, so I look at the forces in the x direction. Uh, that's going to be 230 minus 50 equals to the mass, which is 10 kilograms times the acceleration in the x direction, and then that's going to give me 18 meters per second squared. Uh, and since it's positive, it's up the inclined plane. And then finally, if I assume that the kinetic friction is 0.2, what is the acceleration of the block? Well, the first thing I want to do is just determine what is the frictional force. It's mu k times the normal force. That's 0 0.2 times 87 newtons. And so that's equal to 17 newtons. Now, I'm going to draw this, this force in here. So here's my uh, Fk, which is equal to 17 newtons. So now if I do the same thing I did in part B with the sum of the forces in the x direction equals mAx, except now I have this new force, so it's 230 minus 50 minus 17 is equal to 10 times Ax, just like I did in part B. Then I can solve this for Ax. It's going to be equal to uh, 16 point three meters per second squared. And this also is up the inclined plane, but notice that it's smaller than what we found in part B because of that frictional force is now slowing this object down. Now I have two vectors here. I want to find the sum, the magnitude, and the direction of those vectors. So uh, first I'm just going to draw the vectors. I have vector A, which is 12 newtons. That's vector A. And then vector B is 60 degrees above the negative x-axis, and it's about a little more than twice as big, so it's, it looks about like that. Um, so that's vector B. Notice that Bx is going to be negative, and all the other components are going to be positive. Just want to keep that in mind. Let's calculate the x and y components. Ax is 12 cosine 30. That's equal to 10.4. Uh, Bay is 12 sine of 30. That's equal to 6. Bx is equal to um, 28 cosine of 60. That's equal to negative 14. Notice that I did a negative here because this is negative, and I, I know that that because it's in the second quadrant, and second quadrant vectors have a negative x component. Uh, and then By is equal to 28 sine of 60, and that's equal to uh, 24.2. The y component of that vector is positive. Now I want to know what Rx and Ry are. Rx equals Ax plus Bx. Uh, add these numbers up, and I get um, negative 3.6. And then Ry is equal to Ay plus By. Uh, add these numbers up, I get 30.2. Alright, so now I have the x and y components of R. Uh, x component is minus 3.6, and the y component is uh, plus 30.2. Uh, that's not quite the scale. So I know since the y component is so big and the x component is so small that my vector is going to be pretty darn close to the y-axis. Well, let's go ahead and calculate what is the magnitude of that vector. The magnitude of that vector is equal to the square root 
of 3.6 squared plus 30.2 squared. I just left that negative off because it's going to go away anyway. And that's equal to 30.4. What is this? Oh, this is in Newtons. And then the angle, which I'll call phi right here, the angle phi is the inverse tan of the y component, which is 30.2 divided by 3.6 and that's equal to 83 degrees and that is above the negative x-axis a lot of y'all didn't get that that i was lenient in scoring that though or i could say that it's 97 degrees from or counterclockwise from which is assumed the positive x-axis so 30.4 newtons and then one of these angles would have been correct all right you launch a projectile in the horizontal direction of a platform that's 125 meters tall. It has an initial speed of 20 meters per second. I want to know the horizontal range. This thing is going to go like that. And I want to know how far does it go. All right, the first thing to find is to find t, and I find t by just analyzing the y motion. Fortunately here, v naught y is 0, so I can get rid of that term altogether. I have negative 125. Remember, it's negative because this is 0, this is negative 125. is equal to 1 half of negative 10 times t squared, so that's t is equal to 5 seconds. Now, it takes five seconds to get here. I want to know what is the x displacement in that time. Uh, Vx is going to be 20 meters per second. All of that initial velocity is in the x direction times five seconds. That's equal to 100 meters. So A is the right answer. You launch a projectile off a platform at an angle of 30 degrees. The platform is 20 meters high. Projectile requires four seconds to reach the bottom. What is the speed of the projectile? And actually, I wanted to know what is the initial speed of that projectile. Um, so this angle right here is 30 degrees. I have a, uh, I want to know what V naught is. And I know that this platform is 20 meters. So y is equal to negative 20 meters. And it takes four seconds to reach that. So let's see, I could say, uh, what's the easiest way to do this? Let's try it this way. y is equal to v naught y times t plus 1 half a y t squared. Um, Yeah, I can do it this way. So I have, this is negative 20 is equal to V naught Y times 4 minus 5 times 4 squared. So now I have this, since I know T, I can solve this for V naught Y and I get a negative 20 Um, negative 20 plus 80 divided by 4 is equal to V naught Y. And so that's equal to 15 meters per second. That is an option, but that's not the right answer. So V naught Y is equal to V naught times the sine of the angle theta. So I'm looking for V naught, which is going to be V naught Y divided by sine of theta. So that's going to be 15 divided by sine of 30. which is equal to 30 meters per second. So D is the right answer for number two. A soccer ball is kicked with an initial speed and an angle of angle theta. So I'm, I have this soccer ball that goes up like that. I want to know uh, which of these statements is true. The acceleration of the ball is zero. Okay, while it is true that the acceleration in the x direction is zero, the overall acceleration is not because ay is always equal to minus 10. So that statement is not correct. The speed of the ball decreases as it travels upward. Okay, yes, that is true because, well, the x component 
of the velocity remains the same. However, the y component gets smaller as it goes up. So the overall speed of the object does in decrease as it goes up. So 2 is right. The horizontal component of the velocity is constant. Yes, that's true too. The acceleration of the ball changes directions at the top of the trajectory. No, the acceleration of the ball is always in the negative direction. The velocity of the ball changes direction, but not the acceleration. So that's not correct. So only two and three are correct. For, or, yeah, two and three are correct. Projectiles launched horizontally from a cliff. Which of these represents the Y motion of that object? So it initially starts out with a zero Y velocity, and then it increases in the negative direction. So that would be here. It starts out small and then gets big in the negative direction. So C is the right answer for number four. You launch a projectile with a speed of 20 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees. What can you do to increase the horizontal range of this object? Okay, well, if I increase the angle from 30 to 40, that does increase uh, the horizontal range. Now, there is a point, if I keep increasing my, my angle, then uh, eventually my range will decrease. But increasing it to 50 degrees will not cause my horizontal range to decrease. A couple of you actually mentioned this in the test and I I dismissed it and I'm sorry for that. Y'all were good students. I should have listened to you. Uh, I had made a mistake on this problem. So both one and two are correct and three is correct too. Uh, let's go back to one and two. So if I if I launch this at 30 degrees, it goes like that. If I increase it to 40 degrees, it goes a little bit farther. If I increase it to 50 degrees, it does go a little bit farther. Now there is some angle where I come and it's going to go lower, but not at 50 degrees. Okay, so both 1, 2, and 3 are correct. I will remind you that the angle for the maximum range is equal to 45 degrees, and inside my twisted little head I had some idea and I just wasn't thinking it through, so I'm sorry for that if that caused y'all grief. But 1, 2, and 3 are both correct, and so obviously that's not an option here, so I will uh, deal with that in the, in the score and take that question out, or I guess just take it out. What happens to the horizontal velocity of a projectile launched with an initial speed of 30 meters per second and an angle of 0 degrees? Okay, so I have an object that's going like this, and it uh, horizontal velocity. Uh, because the object is accelerating in the y direction at minus 10 meters per second squared, the horizontal velocity increases. Okay, that's not true. In fact, the y acceleration shouldn't affect the x velocity at all, and we know that the horizontal horizontal velocity remains the same all the time. Because of the horizontal launch, the x component of the velocity is zero. That's not true. In fact, we know that v naught is equal to vx in this case. Because the x acceleration is zero, the horizontal velocity remains constant. Okay, true statement, yes. Because the angle is zero, the horizontal velocity decreases after launch. No, the horizontal velocity remains the same. So c is the right answer for number six. A vector has a magnitude of 12 units at an angle of 30 degrees. What is the x component? All right, so the x component, of I'll call it a r, rx, is going to be equal to r times cosine of theta. That unit r is 12 units times cosine of 30 degrees. And so um, that's, I'm sorry, I need to pause for just a second. Okay, that's equal to 10.4. Vector A is 4 units in the negative x, and vector B is 2 units in the positive x. Let's just draw these. So vector A is 4 units in this direction, and vector B is 2 units in this direction. But I want to know what is 2A minus B. So that's going to be 2 times negative 4 minus 2. So that's negative 8 minus 10. Uh, yeah, that's right. So negative 8 minus 10, so, uh, excuse me, negative 8 minus 2. So the answer is 10 units in the negative x direction because this comes out to be negative 10. Uh, I have vector A that's 10 units, or 10 degrees below the negative x axis. That would be over here. And then vector B is 340 degrees from the positive x axis. That would put it over here. What is the sum of those vectors? It's going to be somewhere between there and there. So that would be D and E is the right answer. 
consider these vectors. What is a minus b? Okay, I'm going to draw negative b right here. That's a negative b, and so the resultant is going to be d for number 10. Object is moving across a frictionless surface with constant velocity. Which of these describes its motion? Okay, the object has inertia. That's true for all objects of mass. The object has a net force of zero only if it's not accelerating, which it's not, so that is true. The object will eventually stop. No, uh, Newton's first law and second law, I guess, says that the object will continue in motion until a uh, force acts upon it. And the object is accelerating, not true. So one and two, so number 11 is A. Person in elevator is accelerating upward. Which of these statements is true? The person feels lighter? Uh, no, in fact, they'll feel heavier. The normal force is larger than their weight. And so it's going to be two and three. Which of these statements about the normal force is true? The normal force is a contact force. Yeah, I have contact between these two surfaces. It's dependent on the mass of the object. Yeah, it's dependent on the mass of the object, in this case anyway, not always, not necessarily, but in this case, the mass certainly is important. The normal force is in the vertical direction. No, the normal force is in that direction, so that's not correct. And the normal force is measured in kilograms, no, it's measured in newtons. So just one and two are correct, C for 13. Newton's first law is concerned with inertia of a 10 kilogram block that's suspended in a rope by a rope like this. It's going down at four meters per second squared. Uh, it has a mass of 10 kilograms. I wanna know what is the tension. So I have FT, FW, FT minus FW equals mass times the acceleration, which is negative four. So F T is equal to the weight, which is 100 minus 10 times 4, which is uh, 60 newtons. So uh, E is the right answer for number 15. You exert a 20 newton force on a rope attached to a 2 kilogram block. Somebody pushes on the or pulls on the block with a force f so that the block remains stationary. So that's this force right here of 20 newtons. I want to know. Oh, no, I'm sorry, that's this force right here of some Newtons. I want to know what is that force to keep the block from moving. So let's draw all these on a coordinate system. So here I have F, that's what I want to know. I have 20 Newtons in this direction. Uh, I also have the weight on this object, that's equal to 20 Newtons. And then I have the normal force, Fn. Now, I know that I'm going to have another frictional force, Fs, because I want to keep it from moving. So uh, that frictional force, some of the forces in the x direction, is equal to 0. 20 minus Fs is equal to 0. So Fs is equal to 20 Newtons. That is my frictional force. So now I need to know what is the normal force in order to give me that. Well, I give you the, the coefficient is is uh, 0.1, so I say 20 is equal to mu times the normal force, or 20 is equal to 0.1 times the normal force. So the normal force has to equal to 200 newtons. Now I can look at the sum of the forces in the y direction. Fn minus F minus Fw, that has to equal to zero. So Fn is equal to, or excuse me, I'm looking for F. F is equal to, um, Fn minus Fw. I know both of those. Fn is 200 uh, minus 20. So that additional force has to be 180 newtons. So that is uh, for number 16 is D. You apply a force of 12 newtons to a mass of 4 kilograms. So I know then that the acceleration of this is going to be 12 divided by 4, 3 meters per second squared. And I just want to know what is the velocity after 2 seconds. Well, the velocity is equal to V naught plus AT. 0 plus 3 meters per second squared times 2 seconds, 6 meters per second. I apply a horizontal force of 40 newtons to a 10 kilogram mass and it accelerates at this rate, 2 meters per second squared. What is the coefficient of kinetic friction? So I have this object. Look, there's a weight 
acting on it. There's a normal force acting on it. There's some force acting over here. That's my 40 newtons. And I know that if this thing was no friction, that it would accelerate at A equal F over M equals to 4 meters per second squared. But it doesn't. It accelerates at 2 meters per second squared. So that means that I have this kinetic frictional force. Uh, I know that the normal force in this case is equal to the weight, which is going to be um, 100 newtons. And I want to figure out what is the the kinetic frictional force, so I can do the sum of the forces in the x, that's F minus Fk is equal to Max, it's equal to 40 minus Fk is equal to 10 times A, which was 2 meters per second squared, that's given in the problem. Then uh, Fk then, solving that for Fk is uh, 40 minus 20 or 20 newtons, so I have a 20 newton force here. Now I'm looking for mu, which is the ratio of Fk to the normal force. That's 20 over 100, which is going to be 0.2. D is the right answer for number 18. Okay, here oh, where I'm finding the equations, let's just write all the write all the forces. So I have a force weight. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and um, resolve that weight into its x and y components. So I have here Fw cosine of 60 and Fw sine of 60. I just resolve that force into its components. I have a normal force and then it tells me there is a static frictional force holding all this into place. So let's see here. This is not right because notice Fn and Fs are in completely different axes, x and y. Fn is not equal to mg. In fact, Fn is equal to this. Fs is equal to Fw cosine 60. F, the sum of the forces in the x direction is Fs minus Fw cosine of 60. Because it's not accelerating, that's equal to 0. So that is correct. And then Fw cosine 60 plus Fs is equal to 0. OK, now if it were uh, negative, that would be correct, but that's not what it says. So only 3. D is the right answer for 19. And here I want to know what is the normal force. Okay, nothing fancy about this. No friction, no other forces. So my normal force is there, and I just have a weight. Uh, I can go ahead and resolve this into its x and y components. That would be Fw cosine of 60. Excuse me, 30. And then this is Fw sine of 30. So if I look at the sum of the forces in the y direction, that's going to be Fn minus Fw sine 30. That's equal to 0. So Fn is equal to Fw sine of 30, which is, uh, let's see, the mass is 200. Yeah, so that's equal to 100 newtons. All right, that's it.